Good afternoon. I am Madeline Kennedy. I'm very pleased to be here at the SAGE Interdisciplinary ALS Conference once again. I am honored that SAGE has included me in this presentation for the fifth year in a row. I am also proud that I have achieved six years with ALS. As I expect most of you know, 90% of people with ALS die before they reach the five-year mark. At this point, I have outlived the life expectancy of most ALS patients, as well as my own expectations. I am grateful for that. I mark these six years not only in time, but also in the quality of my life. As the disease progression is so different for each one of us, no one knows why I am still here and others die within a year of diagnosis. What I do know is that the quality of my life has largely due to the skill and expertise of each one of the disciplines sitting here today. I am confined to a wheelchair. I need to be fed. I use a non-invasive ventilator all night and intermittently during the day. Although I am completely dependent on my husband for my daily care, I have accomplished much and I still enjoy my life. Since my diagnosis in 2012, my family has continued to expand. In addition to my four children, I currently have two daughters-in-law and a son-in-law, and I have had the great fortune to welcome two grandchildren, and soon a third. In 2015, Russell Sage conferred upon me an honorary doctorate in public service. I never dreamed my professional career would include such an honor. Thanks to the dedication and creativity of multidisciplinary teams, I have been able to remain very active in the community. I played golf with an adaptive golf cart for three years. And I went swimming with the help of devoted friends for five years. I continue to work to increase awareness of ALS, a disease too long in the shadows. My advocacy efforts have included lobbying on Capitol Hill, serving as an ALS patient member on the Committee to Develop Guidelines for the FDA, as well as participation in many local and national committees and countless fundraisers. Though I am blessed to be alive, it is most difficult to see so many little things no longer possible. I cannot scratch my head, turn on a light, open a door, pet my dog, or hold my grandchildren. I take a multitude of medications and supplements, many of them off-label. In 2017, the FDA approved a second drug to treat ALS, Radicava, a drug from Japan. This is only the second drug to be approved for ALS in 20 years. While not a treatment or a cure, it is hoped to delay progression by one third. It is cumbersome for patients in that it requires frequent and ongoing infusions, but it does offer a shred of hope. We hope that it will not be 20 years again before the next drug approval. Since the ice bucket challenge, 
interest in research and development for potential treatments for ALS has increased dramatically. As ALS was first identified in 1867, we are grateful that this attention, after 150 years, may lead to conquering this disease. I encourage you to visit my website, which chronicles the progression of my ALS journey. As you can tell, I am very open about my experience, and I would be more than happy to answer any questions. I thank you for your commitment to health care as a colleague and as a patient. The multidisciplinary delivery approach is essential to quality of life and maximizing functional survival times for so many patients with progressive degenerative diseases. I am pleased to report that the numbers for my respiratory capacity have improved over the last several months. Whether this is due to Radicava, my supplements, my off-label medications, or the help of the multidisciplinary team, I cannot say. I can say, however, that somewhere a treatment and a cure is out there. We just have yet to find it. As Stephen Hawking said, where there is life, there is hope. Thank you all. <laughs>